The first sale that took place in Tauranga, and the sale is the CMS, what is known as the CMS property. And that was done between uh, Māori and Reverend Brown. And, um, but it had, it had a whole lot of things connect, connected to it. So what came with that, he, um, he, he helped our people around religion and the Paipera Tapu. He also gave us education and also technology. So that's what came with the property. But in saying that also, that if he ceased to use that land, it, it was to come back. So when it came in 1840, the signing of the treaty, all lands sold before 1840, all those deals were on mouth. And the land came back to the Crown. So this land in 1840 came back to the Crown. And after that and the battles, it became Crown grants and different things like that. So that's why you have a different take after 1840 and the confiscation. Here we have uh, Pukehina Hina. When they, when they decided to fight this battle at the uh, Gate Pa, they had a whole lot of hui everywhere. And um, just to find the place. So they wanted to go to Tiranga up at uh, Whakamarama. That's another Tiranga. And they decided not to because they couldn't get the, the big boats up there, gunboats. Then they decided to go to Oropi, uh, towards the back of the hotel area there. And they decided not to because once again the gunboats couldn't get up the line of the river. So they decided to have it at the end of the of the of Te Papa. And the reason why they had it outside because they didn't want to to uh, blemish the relationship with the sale and the and the ownership of that land to the the CMS. So that's why they kept away from that. Once again, the leaders, the leaders for uh, the Battle of Gate Park and Tiranga were Rauri Puhirake, Tuaya, and Hakaraya. These are all of the Po up at uh, Gate Park. And Henare Tarato and Penetak. But these three guys here, three chiefs, they were born into slavery. They came off the first battle of, of Mowo. When Tamorunga came down and took the, took the path. So therefore, 
what happened there was about 500 who were slaughtered, 150 chased into the sea and never returned, and he took about 160 back up north as slaves. This so happened, these three, and um, Hakariah, their mothers were taken as slaves. They either went from here, up north, uh, being carried in the womb, or they um, were born up north through the marriages that they took place up north, up north. <coughs> so they learnt, they learnt the, the art of uh, trench warfare, and they learnt that from Kawiti. So uh, during the Battle of Lua Pekka Pekka, that's when they, they, they found out about the, the trenches. So um, <clears throat> what happened there was when the battle started back here in Tauranga, these chiefs used to come back every now and again because they had family back here. And they couldn't stay here because they had family back up and north. So they were coming back with this war. But these, uh, these ones here, they, they come from Ngāti Tapu, that's the uh, the uh, Papa, Pene, Pene Taka Tuaya, and Rawi Puhirake, and then of course with Henare Tarato from Tengare. And he, he went up north in a different way. He, uh, as a young man, he learned his, um, he religious, his religious studies up north under Henry Williams. Hence the name Henare. He took over Henare's name. Then he left there and then he went down to uh, Otaki and he, and he um, learned there also with um, Hadfield, Reverend Hadfield. And then he left here, he went over to the island and did a mission over there and then came back in time for this battle. So that's why he had the knowledge and the knowledge uh, about, about the, uh, the Paipera Tapu and that's why when you look at the rules of engagement, it's all about the uh, Romans on how you would fight. Moving, moving forward, uh, these were the commemorations of uh, Gate Pa that was held. And um, this is a, a shot of Gate Pa. Might not look it. But it's up here, and I, I think it might be an overkill on the land mass here. Because as you know, if you go up there, you don't get a big indictment like that. But it may have been like that prior to. This is uh, after the battle. After the battle of, uh, of Gate Pa. And uh, you can see here, you can see the trenches up at... Uh, we will pick up, pick up. The trenches there were only about this, this deep. You see these trenches here? They were over, just under, just under three meters high, deep. And then you had these foxholes. And then you had about three or four uh, warriors in there. And then they had uh, some more, and so on and so on. And that's why during the eight hours of bombing, they passed. Very few died because of that reason. Now, well, well, how did that happen? How that happened was Kawiti. Kawiti said, says to um, his own uh, Mokopuna, as in Rawiri uh, Puhirake and all of them, said, the bigger the gun, the deeper you dig. So at Gate Pa, you had the biggest gun, state of the art stuff. It was a 110 pounder, it was huge. And the first time they used it was on the Battle of Gate Park. So um, how did that go? Well, we know what happened with, uh, with that big gun. It was sitting on top of uh, Pukerea. Pukerea is where the, the co-master of flats of the RSA is, just behind the hospital. That's where they had those guns, that gun. They had a whole lot of guns, 15. 15 guns, but that one. So they had it there. But then, then they found that after the battle, and they talk about it today, they bought the wrong gun. That gun was for fighting from this ship 
to rescue. So you just went like that. But when they ranged in on this far side, all of the shells were found down by the, the uh, library in Gretton. So that's where the bulk of that happened down at uh, Gretton. But that's just to give you a, what took place here. Oh, oh, wait. Uh, here we have um, Greer, Colonel Greer, he, he took over at the Battle of um, Te Ranga because Cameron, because he lost the battle at Cape Pa, he was removed and sent home to England. And I'm told from one of the students from, uh, from the Polytech that I had up there, and he did some homework on, on Cameron. When he got back to, um, to England, he was, um, <clears throat> because he was a, a general, he was, and his family lived at that level, but because he lost his battle and he was sent back home, the whole family were reduced to living, what you might say, um, as paupers. So, uh, so that's what happened to, to Cameron. But anyway, so Greer took over. So he's just waiting for a fight. He hasn't had one yet. So he's waiting for that fight. And just to give you a, a, a layout of the, the Battle of um, Te Ranga, that's the way to Te Papa. This is going back up to the Tomata of Paispa Road. This here, this here is uh, the rifle pits. They were digging, and it was was um, done in a quarter moon. So it's quite different to the Battle of Gate Park, where they had straight lines. Well, these ones here was in the quarter moon. So um, they had to um, uh, the warriors. The Māori warriors had a hui. And you know, Māori always have, like to have a hui, but it takes a long time to come to a general consensus. So, like at Gate Pa, we had a hui, big hui there, and it went on for days. Well, this one here, they had the hui at uh, Waimak, and it took two days to sort out what they were going to do. <clears throat> so now we all understand what tino ranga tino tanga means. That's exactly what it means. Not necessarily you bring a whole lot of Māori together and they all think the same. That's why we've got to talk more. To understand and to allow things to move forward. It might take two days. I remember during the claims process, us and our cousins from Ruahine were having discussions. And I'll tell you, it took 13 hui's to get nowhere. <laughs> So that's what it takes. So anyway, so they um, they came up on the on the 21st of June from the from the hui, and they started digging in and getting everything ready for the battle. But um, in picking the site, Pareha from Ngatihe, he chose that site. So anyway, others didn't like the site. So the others was uh, Hakaraya. He says, well, I'll dig the trenches. As soon as those guns go off, I'm leaving because it's a death trap. So, so that's exactly what he did. But anyway, uh, so they were there and there was upwards about 200 people there. And they had women and children there. So at seven, at 0700 hours of the 20, 21 June, someone went into the camp, camp to Papa, and spoke to um, Colonel Greer and said to Colonel Greer, hit them now, they're up there. And uh, the Kare there, the person they went in there uh, through, through different ways and means of finding out what was said, and this is what he says. 
Then they get up to uh, Tananga at around just this side of Lebanon. So they get there. So he tells his men to settle. So he, he wanted to scan the place, Korea. So he scans the place. And you can see all the works going on. They can all see all the, the, the yellow soil that's been turfed out and, and making these trenches. And uh, these trenches, these trenches were were four feet wide, about 12 feet or more longer, long. And then they had already dug down three feet up at that time. So in between each 12, 12 foot um, trench, you had a gap of hard soil. And that was about uh, three or four feet. And then the next one and so on, and so on, and so on. 170 yards. So if you go up to, um, to Chilanga, that's this side here, that's the, yep, that's the um, eastern side and the western side. This side here is quite steep, and likewise this side. So they did the pave. So he, um, Kurugui assesses the place, he sees it, so he starts to get shaky feet. He says, blow this, there's too many of them. So he tells a couple of guys to go back to, to the camp uh, to Papa to bring back 200 more soldiers, to bring back another six pounder Armstrong gun, and to bring back two cohorts. So where they went, so they just sat and they waited for two hours. So taking a long time. So he got uh, a bit uh, ho-ha. So he said, blow this, we'll attack. So he set his men up and then they started. So they started firing, firing the guns, the, six, the one six pounder into the trenches. And like I said, he saw the woman folk moving about. And then he saw some leave, mainly women, leave the path and they had gone over the side, on that left hand side, the eastern side, that side is called Omataka. And you can you just understand the word if you know the, what the word means. The kubu means that that's where they ran and fell to get out of that place, was a place called Omataka and running. The whole pa, uh, the, 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 the name of, the, of the, the area, the site, that was called um, Taumata Iahui, that was his name. But when, when, the, when the warriors got there, they, um, they, they called it Tiranga. And Tiranga, Tiranga is, is like if we all turned up there. That's what Tiranga means. So that's why the name is Tiranga today. So, um, <coughs> so he started firing in for about an uh, hour and a half, two hours. And then once that was done, then he said to his men, take the path. This is what uh, one of the paintings that was done. This is what it looked like at that time. And this is another painting from Robley. He paints the path. And um, these are these um, little Trenches. 
So they're all about three feet deep. So that was the, the makeup of the pa. So you know there's pine on them. And then then Greer said to his men to start marching on the path. This is just a shot of the six pounder gun. That's it there. This is another shot of, uh, of Teranga. But we all know once I'm finished, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna hear me say, they never got that far to shoot them. They shot them out here. So I don't know what he was painting. So this is another shot of the path, again. So anyway, um, as they were getting closer and closer to the path site, then, like I said, there were, there were 700 yards out, and then when they were told to move in, they moved up, and they started moving towards the path, and they were all firing. Now, there was upwards of 500 men. Remember, there was only 140 in there. Go back to Gate Path, there was 240. So our numbers had dropped. They had already started dividing the people between those two battles. Six, <laughs> six weeks between the two battles, he had pretty much changed the makeup of Gate Pa and Tiranga. So the ones who were at Gate Pa never turned up at Tiranga. And the reason being because deals were already being cut. So anyway, <coughs> As they get about 300 yards out, then they they witnessed they witnessed the um, the the pit now warriors step up out of the the trenches and started walking towards their death. No guns. So they just they just walked out. And the word they write about they they call it is stoically. And stoically is like this, with your head bowed and walking to your death. And that's how they all stood up and walked out. And they all died about 30 yards out from the path. The majority of them died. There was only about 10 who were wounded and, and some died later. So that was a huge um, disaster for us and our people. So anyway, what comes with um, with, uh, with battle, with war, these are the spoils from that battle. And um, a lot of them are in uh, Kotawa's um, expedition, yeah, expedition. His, his, um, his stuff, he took off Rauri Puhirake and, and he, he, it remained in his hands. And that's why it's in that, in the museum around that. So a lot of stuff, a lot of money was taken. And like I say, there was no rules up at Tiranga, not like Gay Pa. We had the rules up there, but because they charged on us, there was no organizing of any rules at all. So that was, um, yeah, that was, uh, that was a huge problem. But anyway, our, our old and, and the women folk had already gone. Some had, uh, had escaped as well. And about three days later, it was noticed at Matapi that some of the women that were at this battle, they turned up back at Matapi and they died, one or two died a few days later, but otherwise they were all wounded. So those are the women. And I'm just talking about the ones that went back to Matapi. The rest had gone up the other way. They went down the, the Waiwarahi and the rest had gone back up to the Tomat and then crossed over to their homelands on the Hangaru side and so on and so on. Now this is what's happening. This had to be in at Matapi this year. Because um, they talk about the women folk turning up there. So I can only say that this is at Matapi.
after after the battle, after that battle of Tilanga, the surrender took place. Now the surrender took place about straight opposite the Rangini um, Lundanga up on the hill. That's where the that's where they laid down the arms. And they, that that happened in the fifth and sixth of August. That took place. And then that's when they everyone had to decide where they stood. So they had to hand in all the rifles. And all the rifles that was taken from Gay Pa at that battle, none of them turned up here because all these guys had them. And they must be hidden, of course, but they came in with the old gun. But uh, so there was a great, um, uh, a big problem for, um, for Tauranga Mona at that time for all the tribes to come and surrender because uh, they had the upper hand on us at that time. So we were all vulnerable, and plus we were all being split. So you had some that wasn't there at the at the second battle. But uh, I also like to mention the ones who came from out of out of the district to come to help, and that's um, people like uh, Iwi, like Hapu from from Hinerupe. They were here. Fakato here was here. Upper Nui, fam and these are families, like families of, uh, of Tuhoi, and then also coming back to Talwa. Even though Talwa was our biggest problem, they still had families that came to help. And remember, remember Hakarai was there, he's Tuturu, Talwa, Waita. But because he lived in the district, he was part of the interior until the lions came in and cut Waita out. So that's why they, they don't exist on this side of the confiscation. But, um, so you had Rangi Wewe here with families here, also. And then you had um, the Koiriki, the Koiriki from up in, um, in Mangatangi. That's uh, the Waikato Tainui uh, contingent that came down to help. Now this is, uh, this is Gate Pa, four days, after the battle. That there is the redoubt. They built that four days after. After the battle of Gate Pa, and that became the redoubt. So um, when they were marching past Gate Pa to go to Tilanga, that's what they would have been marching past, is that. And then um, after all of that, then came the confiscation, <coughs> and um, what they what they did, what what um, Gray did, he surveyed two hundred and ninety thousand hectares and used these points: Wairake, Otana Wainuku, Pufenua, Wera Iti, and going around Wairuanu, Ngatime, Ngatamahime Erua, and to Mount Taroha, and then down to Mangakuri. Afare. So that was the, uh, then, like I said, he had already divided us. So what he, what he did, what he did, he had judged all their rohe through legislation. He legislated all their rohe to belong to him, this tribe. So what that went and done, is assimilated everyone, even though there were three tribes here, into one. And that was his way of working, and he did a good job. So all he had to talk to wasn't to those three, was to talk to him, to that even. So that's why he got a, a, a fairly a long way. Now, this one here is the Tipuna Kati Kati Purchase. Now, now we have a huge problem today because because of how it was done. But if we if we stick to what took place up there today is what happened back then, then I think we'd be better off. The reason being, when the land was up for grabs, the Tipuna Kati Kati purchase, how lucky come across and they had to put their claims in. So they put their claim in. And that very, very 
couple that still exist today put their claim in under the marriage of the ancestors prior to this time. And I'm talking about Te Ruinga and Pewirangi. Pewirangi was the daughter of um, Kino Moirua. She was given to him over a battle, so that became his wife. Then he started having children, and from there came that particular hapu, Ngāti Tumutumu, a rahiri. And the reason why they have the rahiri attached to it is because Te Runga went up north and he died up north. So because of that they added the, the rahiri from Ngāti Rahiri from up, up north to the hapu name. So that's the hapu name they have now. So, so he, he came into here using the Ranginui Whakapapa. And that's why he got what he got. And nothing wrong with that. It's a bit different when the whole lot of Hauraki coming in to say, I belong. And that's the problem we have today. Is that. So anyway, we must be, um, um, the Uru Mahura must be hoha with this uh, discussion. The Hauraki one. But anyway, so, <coughs> so they confiscated the block. They asked the Siwi, I want, you to, I want you to give a quarter, a quarter of the land back for your head at Gate Pa. So what does he do? The Siwi does? They hop on the sand fly. There's a sailing ship. They go up the harbour, trying to decide what they want to give. And the first thing they do, I give this up. So why would they give that up? Because it's not theirs. It's theirs. So that becomes that iwi. And what happens to them? They, they have a problem for the rest of their lives until we get to the hearings that we had in 2001 and 2002. So, um, so that was the confiscation block. Then, then they realised there wasn't that much arable land up the top here. So what do they do there? They cross the Wairoa and they go up the Ruangarara, come down to Tipuna and out to the water's edge and take that. And that's the Piriraka. So, and that's when Piriraka really, really started to fight. They, they weren't fighting really. They say they were here and they were there. They were, but they weren't 100% for these battles until they crossed the White Wall and then you saw Piriraka fight till the end because that was their land. But to make matters worse, when they took the land, they um, gave some of the land back, but never gave it back to the Tangata Whenua. They gave it back to their French husbands because Piriraka women weren't, or people weren't allowed to own land. So they gave the land back to the, the Boudoir and uh, the Burrell and, and, and all of that. So they ended up with the, with the ownership of the land. So you still have problems at Piriraka over there. So, so you can see, see what Gray has done to us. He just mixed us around, struck a deal here and there and what have you, and uh, we've ended up like that. But uh, in saying that also, in saying that also, we, we have to, you know, we, we have to try our best to get the wrongs of the, of the past right among ourselves. And, uh, and one big tucky that we do have on our hands today and uh, is that one of Hodaki. And that's, that's the whakapapa they use to come into Tauranga. They're using Taraya's one, that's where Taraya comes from, from that hapu. From uh, Peurangi, who was Kinomoiru's daughter, and of course Teruinga, who came from me. But they knew what they were doing when they, when they put in for that block. 
people for on this side, which was nothing wrong with it. There was nothing wrong with it, because they did it from their line. But today, the bulk of Hauraki are saying we're here. So that's, that's a huge problem we have. So, this is uh, one of the early maps that was done of uh, Tauranga back in those times. And then, to make matters worse, we end up with the Bush campaign. Now, the Bush campaign happened in uh, 1867. That's not too long, well, three, three odd years after the Battle of Tiranga. So, this here was all about those people who were taken off their land and their land taken. So, what do they do? So they start ripping out the survey pegs, uh, stealing the, the, the lines, uh, the survey lines, and even to, to the point of killing. So Gray says, well, we've had enough of this. So he gets Gilbert Mayer, and he tells Gilbert Mayer, go get your force. So he gives him a pink slip. We tell him, go up there, rape and pillage. Slash and burn. Those words I, I, I said exactly, that's exactly what took place there. Slash and burn and rape and pillage. Now they were dealing with with um, Kanga. They were dealing with with people who live in Brookfield, who live in Otomosai, who leave his road. They were killing those people. The community. And they didn't care. This here, they had none of these. Oh, this is just a, a early shuttle, or whatever it was. But you know, I was given that, which is suited for tonight, because that's what took place. But then they were had Patu Wata Wata. Patu Wata Wata is palisade to keep you safe. We never had those. We were like the houses in Brookfield and Weaver's Road. So they would go up there. And they started right along from uh, Oropi, dealing to those families, coming across to the Taumata, and even to the point of going back again the next day and have another crack at them just in case they come back and then move on. And three times they went back to one pa, one village, to make sure that they, they've killed or they've burnt or they've uh, slashed and ripped out all of the. Um, the, the Riwai, there was an Irishman, and their job was to pull out the, the potatoes. And he said, in his writing, he said in his writing, it made a grown man cry. And he said, I'm an Irishman, and we never do that in our, in our land. So he, he was really hurt to be seen, all this kind going to waste in boot. So that's what, they, that's what they did there. So it moved all the way through right across to Hangarau, Ngāti Kau, Ngāti Rangi, and, and did all of them, and then moved into the Piri Rākau and, um, and dealt to them. This, this was a bit different because the same thing happened here, but it was done a, a bit uh, what you might call easier for us. It was confiscated, then they took the land. Well, on that side, they jumped across, then they burnt them out, then they hounded them and raped and pillaged, then they took the land. But when they, when they took the land, they gave the land to some of the, the Maori who went to help the British troops deal to these families on the other side of the Wairo, to Pirirapa. So, um, so we, we, we never had that on our side. We, we had that burnt, but our lands were taken quite subtly was just taken by the, by the pen, but uh, their ones was just ripped out of their hands. So they, so the, to the Māori, Māori who, who gained land there, owned it for a day, and a, <coughs> a day and a half, and then they sold it. Now, I would sell it too. I, I wouldn't stay among Pirirāko and live on the land that I got for helping the Crown kill you. So they sold that, and, and fair enough. So they. There was about 15 of them from the one Iwi. Got land from there, 
and then they came out, sold it, and then came back. So that's, that's what we've had to, to live with, with the Crown intervening in our, in our uh, iwi politics. politics. And that's what's happening up at Hauraki, is the Crown getting in the way and endorsing wrong things to allow it to happen. So I see another Bush campaign when you see Finlayson doing what he's doing or look like what he wants to do, then that's where the problem is. Let's go back to our gate path. These are the trenches here. This is Cameron Road, of course, and then on top is the path. But like I say, those, the, the ground must be up further because these here were about three feet deep. So, um, so that was the path. And we were just talking us and Debbie. And she said, what time frame would that be? And uh, just as well, we had a photo at home of uh, Mariana, that's George Hall's sister, who came back from America. So she had to get out of the country because the Second World War was about to begin. And because she had an American passport, her and her two brothers and another sister and the mother, Te Awetu, had the photo taken in here. And that's how we knew the dates. This is um, the 100 years of the commemoration of uh, the Battle of Gate Pa. And over here, Uru Mahura. Here's Uru Mahura. And that's uh, Mate Kohi. So um, all the schools went to that on that day. That was, uh, that was a lovely day. They had speakers, people who spoke at that day. And the speakers there was uh, Turi, Turi Tekani, and Joe, Joe Nak Ngātoko. Then we moved to um, Tiranga. And these are the color pie. These are his family from Mandapur. Now why are they here? They're here because of the Kingitanga. The battles that happened here in Tauranga was because of the Kingitanga. And I, I mean what I say is that Tafio said to us in the early beginnings, put your land under my mana and they will not take it. So we did, along with others. So we put our land under the king. As soon as we had done that, straight away, I suppose we should have known that we were going to be the next place after the Battle of Rangiriri or Rāko. And, uh, and those places, after that battle, they came straight to Tauranga. But anyway, um, this is here now to Fanga. And um, he's doing the, the karakia, of course. And then opening on behalf of Koriki, it's paid to Hurini Jones. So obviously Pei couldn't, couldn't make it, he probably was sick at that time. But there's all of the mourner that's here. And here is um, um, Tuek Mavritan. Awatere. Pita. Yeah, Pita Awatere. That's on me. So that's another shot of the. And this is, this is generic, eh? They did, did this everywhere. Kiki, ki, you name it, up and down the country. You've got these here. But also, in Tauranga, how do you like this? You put a road through Gate Pass, straight through the middle. You get up to Tauranga, you go straight through the middle. And that was, I think, because Gray did the same in Ireland, in different places where he, there's only one way to get rid of a, uh, uh, you know, tangata whenua, is run through their pa, so they got no, no knowledge of, of the past. So that's probably what happened, because it happened in Kiki and, and or Rangiriri, Rangiriri and all over the country, all of our past. Was it because we made them in the way of the roads or the roads wanted to go that way because it was an easier path, maybe. Obliterated. Ah, obliterated, yes. 
Here we have a shot of Otamataha. That's uh, the burial ground. Now, um, after the Battle of Teranga in um, 1870, the bodies were exhumed. The bodies of um, Rawiri Puhilake and Henare Tarato. They were exhumed at the Battle of Teranga. They were on the eastern side of those trenches that I showed you. When they buried the dead, they just lined, laid them down all the way through. Now, like I said to, you, to the people today up there, I don't know whether they dug down another two feet or three feet. But if they didn't, we are only three feet away from our ancestors. So we don't know that. But anyway, um, so they, they, they find the Rawiri and they knew where they were because they were crisscrossed on top of your, of your normal. Now they were crisscrossed like this. They dug them up and brought them back down to Te Papa and by a boat for Rawiri Puhilake. Took them over to Orua Matua. That's where he was from. And even though he had, he, he worked mainly with, with Ngāti Rangi and Ngāti Kau, their wives were fondly. So they never had much time on this side. Um, and and they, because they had problems with him. But anyway, um, and, and, and the problem, I might just say, the problem with him was when he came back, when he used to come back, he was treated like a slave because of his uh, relationship to Kawiki and up north. Because remember, we don't have a good memory of, of Ngāpui down here. So okay, he was linked to that, so, so that was the case. But anyway, once they had done what they wanted to do over at Orua Matua, you know where Orua Matua is? We go across the Mangatapu Bridge. As you climb up, keep on going, and then you look to the right, where you see all this fellow's relations, don't pay rates, all there. That's Orua Matua, in that, in that little peninsula. We want those rates back. So um, and then they brought them back and they buried them here. And so all of, a lot of the chiefs are there. The, um, the crown paid for, the, for the, the lovely plaques they have up there and the, and the stones and what have you. But so in there you have um, Hori Ngātai, he's buried there. You have uh, Rauri Puhirake and then you have um, He Nare Tarato. So they buried there. But anyway, this one here was um, opened in 1995, I think it was. Um, this was in memory of the ones who died at all the battles. And sadly, we only come up with 12. But I thought that, that needed more research, but we since found out more than that now. Uh, this here represents the gourd, the gourd that um, Heni Tikiri Karimu, she was the only woman that fought at the Battle of Gate Pa. She came down from the north. She was a, a slave. She was born into slavery. Her mother was taken from Makoya, taken up north, sold to an Irishman, and had Heni Tikiri Karimu, also known as Jane Foley, and a brother, and a brother, Niri. They came back down and they fought at the battle. They were in the what you might, as we know, where the 50, you had the main part, gate part, the one further out towards, towards the west. That was the, the par site where the, the Koiriki went and those people were all coming from north because they all turned up late. But nevertheless, they were still there to take up the arms next morning. So that was Heaney. She's the one responsible. So she's responsible to giving the water to Booth. So this represents that. In actual fact, it was an old rusty nail tin. Gave the water to him like that, but it looks good. So that's all Tamataha. And then we had uh, the Dino settlement at Teranga in 1996. The land at Teranga was given back to Mahapu through a whole lot of 
whole lot of hard fighting to have that happen, but it happened. And I, I want to make mention of the, the chairman of the Tauranga Mona Trust Board in Wokangatai. He's the one who commissioned and pushed for that to happen. So we have uh, fond memories of him at that time. So we're grateful to him. So it's um so you know thing I will say, be careful what you ask for, you might get it. Well we don't even own a mower, let alone a, a cow. That's why it's in other people's hands to keep it clean. Maybe one day. And we took a shot of these just because people are always asking, who are these? Who are these? Well, we start from Cameron. Cameron was put there because he's the closest to town. He came from Te Papai. So that's from there. Then you have the Rangati Ranginui Po, represented by all its hapu. And that's starting from Ngati Kahu, coming forward, Hangaro, <coughs> and uh, Tamara Awaho, and uh, Ngaitahi, and Buahine and all those, those places. So that's them there. Over here, we have Penetaka, Penetaka, Rauri Puhirake, and of course, Henare Tarato, representing that uh, Ngaitarangi Po. Over here, uh, oh yes. over here, we have Ngati Pukinga. So this is the Ngāti Pūkinga Pō. Next to Ngāti Pūkinga, we have the Pō that represents Ngā Hapu o Te Motu. All those ones that came from outside to help this battle here at Gate Park and Te Ranga. And next to um, the Pō o Te Motu, we have Hakaraya. Now, all the carvers were told black, no coming with the colours of a dog or, or, or whatever. We didn't want to have a Christmas tree along Cameron Road. So some of them turned up with um, different colours. So they got painted out. But anyway, uh, for Longa from Waita, they went along and painted this off black. And it's, uh, it, it's what do you call it? It's a, it's a paint that um, it's like plastic. You can't get through it. So we couldn't tell them. So. That's how it is. So, so that's Hakaraya. Hakaraya is the same one that I've been talking about all night. Hakaraya got killed in the Waiwaka Gorge. And when they killed them, the, the writings that came out through the Southern Cross, that was the paper of the day that ended up being the Herald, was, today the son of Satan, his life was taken by troops. Now they call him son of Satan because they really thought that he was that sort of man. But he, he was a religious man also. When it was time to fight, he will fight. When it was time to pray, he will pray. He was a great friend of uh, Holy Tupai. I went to their hearing and they presented a green stone mere. And that mere was given to Hakaraya from Tupai. And when you look at it, and you feel it, it was well balanced as if it's been touched up with a machine. But it was done the old way. So I was privileged to see that, that uh, he had given up and I. Then next door to Hakaraya is Hangaru, Ngati Hangaru, Timeti. Now, and you say, well, they represented here on Ranginui or there. So why? Well, the reason why is because Ngāti Hangaru had the biggest number at the battle of, uh, of Gate Pa. That's Ngāti Hangaru. And, uh, and not only that, they were uh, quite a large hapu then. But after confiscation, the, the tribe depleted. Some of them went back onto the other side of the, the, the Kaimai. And that was easy for them to go back there because there was no land back this side. So that's uh, the Hangaro Po. Then at the very end is uh, the Po of Ngaitama Rawaho. And for the simple reason, is our funeral. 
So that's why they there. Then you get the, all the carvings on the trees. Two trees they were cutting down because of the, the flagpole at that time. So the carvers asked to leave them up and wheel. So they left it to them. So when you go up there, you see all these different tohu signs of different things that took place back in the battle. So you got the hoki oi there, that's uh, the kingitanga paper, uh, newspaper, and different things like that. Now we, we back up to Ranga again, and these are the carvers who carved Nga Iro Iro or Teranga, the maggots of Teranga. And here's the carvers here, and it was largely a Pukenga pot, so that's it there. And then you got the smaller one back on this side, which is the Tamarawaho pot. This one here. So we back up Chiranga again at this Pohiri. And uh, everyone is all there in their blankets. In their blankets. Yes, Iria, Iria, Maura, and of course, Narodi. So, we have come to an end, and uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. Now, we've got a little time for questions. My mom will put it down the back, she's putting up her hand. Stoically, you're saying. What did they, um, you know, give up? Was it what they gave up? Okay, or? okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry. There's something that I missed out there. Eh? When they walked out and they died about 30 yards out from the trenches, and they were, the majority of them were dead, there was a, a few that was in a bad way. So, through the writings of one of the British soldiers, soldiers he, leaned, he leaned over. And then he, he saw him and he, and he says, you could see that we were an overwhelming force. Why didn't you stop? And these are the famous words from, from Te Ranga. Me mate ahau mo te whenua. If I am to die, let it be for the land. And that's all they had in their mind. Never mind if they die. It has to be for the land. And they weren't going to run, hey? That's the thing, they weren't going to run. The women folk were, uh, as been told, the women folk were really at their mean to come out. And if they didn't come out, we'll stay in. So they were pushed out. Pushed out. And uh, that's how bad it got. And then when all the women were gone, that's when they stepped up and stoically walked out and took their lives. Mm. Bye. Well, once again, thank you for coming this evening. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, sorry, mate. Um, at Gate Farm commemoration of Wally, there was a discussion here, there was a book coming out about the Bush campaign. Is it Buddy Macquarie writing it or somebody? No, no, um, what, what did happen? What did happen is Patrick, Patrick wrote, and it's, a, it's really, it's, it's the first book uh, about 40 pages. It gives some really good, um, good, um, you know, knowledge in there about what took place. But he never put it up for sale. He just took it around to each wedding they had around, and then he just presented that to the. So, so yes, one has been done, but it, it never went public. It just went to the to those different battles. But it, it's choice, choice really. Any more questions? Yes, that's what.
Yep. Which one was that? It's got its head down. Oh, the one well, Joyce Rose. The big one. The big, huge one. The, the big one. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, as I said, that's called Nga Iro Iro O Tiranga. The maggots of Tiranga. That's what that's, that is. And that was largely a Pukinga one. And then you got the smaller one down by the new gate. As you go down Joyce Road, the smaller one. Oh, and you go down Joyce Road. Yes. Down yeah. Okay. And then you got the smaller one there. That's the Ngai Tamarawa one. And that's where the, the battle actually took place on that line? From that fence line all the way back up to the other fence line. If you go up the top end where the house is, you'll see. On oh, Joyce Road. Uh, no, when you look from Joyce Road, oh, yeah. you your car, walk in, and go right to the other end. And you'll see the um, the um, the kohati, the yeah, the, the, the kohati of uh, Tiranga. Yeah. yeah, the stone, the, the monument. 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 Yes, yeah. yes, commemorate. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and it was a massacre, it was a massacre, but you've got to look at the timing of when, when they were told, and that's, that's the reason, is depending when Greer got the knowledge, the hot oil, and he acted straight away, because the message that came in went like this, hit them now before they dig in, and he knows what happened to Cameron when they dug in. Cameron was sacked. So he didn't want to do that to himself. So that's when he found out, he just charged and dealt with them. Yes, sir? Um, we talked about the, the new suburbs out from um, Greerton. We call them Gate pa um, Pies Path, just on the, the Pies Path Road. Would it be more appropriate to call those suburbs Taranga? Or does that name just refer to the battle site? Well, um, I know there was some, some effort, effort of changing the whole Paispa Road yes. and taking the name of Captain Pius. Captain Pius came up from Taranaki. He learned all the bad works from down there. So they sent him up here. He, 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 he was under Von Temsky, and we know what Von Temsky was like. So he brought that here. And when they saw him operating in the hell he did, he was sent home. But anyway, not Māori, but our Pākehā community up there found out about that. So they made a big push to take the name Pius off that road. But like always, when you've got 2,000 letterboxes along the place, that's hard to do. All right, it was just a short road. Well, sweet. Well, it's like Cameron Road in Britain. Yeah. Those places. We have to live with it. Any more questions? Uh, who was it again who came down and said, it said, hit them now while they're, they're only three feet trenches rather than three metre trenches? Yeah, what well, was his name again? I never, I never gave a name. No, no, you called yeah. it, you described and, it. Yeah. And, I, and I can't give a name. Oh. I can't give a name. But one thing I can do, if you look at the lay of the land, then you have an idea who was that. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Uh, we're, we're about two hours over time, but uh, let's you. <laughs>